Today, I'll be going through the best way to earn in every game mode. In this video, I identify key strategies to placing and earning this season, whether you're already someone who earns consistently or someone that has yet to get their first earnings. Starting off with solos, it's never been easier to earn. Victory Cup means that instead of prolonged consistency over the course of many games, all you need to do is play well in one single game to win it and take home your first 100 earned. Now that the Nitro Fists have been vaulted and the Nitro Splashes have been nerfed, the meta is actually super balanced and anyone can get a win in finals. Before finals though, you actually have to account for the huge format change in open. Instead of it being 30 points per win and 1 point per kill, they basically half the importance of kills by making wins worth 65 points. This old format was already placement heavy, but the new format is even more so, so that basically means kills are useless. This means that in order to qualify every week, you need to play extremely passive. And not only are the placement points extremely important, the way that they're distributed is not linear at all. Instead of evenly giving out points as the lobby dies down, they give more than half of the total placement points in the lobby to the top 6 players. Dying in 7th gives you 30 points, or winning the game gives you 65, which is an absolutely insane exponential explosion in points given at the very end. The main difference between how it was before and how it is now is that you can't rack up points needed with a bunch of mediocre games. Instead, you need 2 strong games to give you enough points to qualify. Now, moving on to finals, I've already made a dedicated video talking about solo finals and if you want to hear a more in-depth explanation about it go watch that video but the first thing you have to do is determine your playstyle. For the more passive players watching this video it's 100% possible to win a game without getting a single kill because of the heal off meta. In my other video, I watch a whole game of mine where I win without getting a single refresh. The trick to doing this is a couple things. First off, it's important to carry 6 medkits. 6 medkits allow you to heal for 600 ticks in zone, which is how long it takes for storm sickness to start ticking. Any more medkits than that and it's useless because you won't be able to pop them. An ideal loadout for this playstyle would be 6 medkits, a gatekeeper shotgun, a fizz, and either more shield or nitro splashes. In order to make it to the end of final zone without killing anyone, you need to do one of two things. The first option is to play extremely conservatively, and I mean extremely conservatively. You have to do things like sitting in cones instead of boxing up mid-moving zone and timing your rotates perfectly so you don't have to build to block shots. To execute this, you need to have top-notch awareness of your surroundings so that you can understand exactly what you can get away with and what is going to get you killed. Another strategy you can use that I touched on in my full guide is using old builds that save materials. If you don't feel confident going for kills, but you use too many mats to not need a refresh, a good strategy is trying to scavenge loot. Oftentimes when someone dies, the person who killed them doesn't get all of their loot or any of it, and whoever is the most aware can oftentimes just jump on it and get it first. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see is people overcomplicating everything. The first thing you need to master is getting down an efficient off spawn because since there's only 3 games, you need to make sure you live almost every game off spawn because you can play all of them out every time. During mid game, your only focus should be to stay max heals and max mats. In solos, I like to do what's called min maxing. Min maxing in a Fortnite context means keeping everything completely optimal up until end game. This means building off every angle to ensure you don't waste heals while ensuring you refarm literally everything possible to stay completely max mats for as long as possible. Once you've mastered this concept and can consistently make 2 to 3 endgames completely stacked, you should be able to win some games. Now, for the more aggressive and more confident players, instead of carrying 6 medkits, you should be carrying 2 guns to make sure you can get refreshes deep into endgame. Since everybody knows that the games go to heal off, just about everybody in the final zone is carrying medkits, oftentimes instead of their secondary gun. This gives you, with a secondary gun, a huge advantage looking for kills, and it will not only allow you to secure the match you need to close out the game, but also pick up the medkits that you need in the last zone, rather than holding on to them for the entire game. Another small tip for these last zones is if you kill someone but don't have time to carry the extra med kits, you can leave your mark on them and then walk back to get them once zone fully closes out. This oftentimes is worth it because taking ticks to grab them before zone fully closes makes you susceptible to losing to storm sickness even if you have 6 med kits. For the final bonus tip for solos, you can use floppers to outlast a couple ticks of storm sickness, so save them and use your med kits first, and then once you start getting storm sickness warning, count 10 seconds and then immediately start popping your floppers. Moving on to the next game mode to earn in duos. In order to earn in duos, you need to place top 50 in a duo cash cup opens and then make top 40 in the finals the next day. While getting top 40 can be relatively difficult if it's your first finals, the main challenge is getting top 50 and qualifying to the finals to begin with. Duo cash cup games can mainly be separated into three main evos. For those of you who don't know, the amount of points that you queue into a game with determines the skill or points of the other people in your game. The first of the three is low elo. These are the games that start when you're outside of the top 1000 of the tournament. 
These are the types of games you can play aggressive in order to secure a lot of kills and gain winning loot to boost yourself up on the leaderboard. A common misconception that a lot of people have about the dual cash cups is that they think that once they've done poorly in a couple of games, it's over from there and there's no way to catch up and qualify. This is completely wrong. In fact, it's actually easier to qualify by doing poorly at the beginning and catching up towards the end. I'll explain why this is the case once I get through the other two elos, but it's important to note the most important part of the cash cup is that last hour. This is when you need to catch up and get around 350 points so that the qualification is within 65 points, aka one win. Now, back to the elos. Mid elo is when you're within around 1000 to top 200. In these games, in order to make it up to the top 50, you just need a win. The players on average will be pretty decent, and in these lobbies, you should play aggressive enough so that you can secure your storm surge and winning loot early. Finally, high elo. High elo are the hardest lobbies in the tournament, and most of the players in them are pros. In order to do well in tournaments, you need to make sure that you're not wasting a lot of time in long games where you don't get any points, and the games that are easiest to die at this 20 minute mark are these ones. These types of games you get punished hard for making any type of mistake. While the ideal way to qualify seems like it would be to get a high kill win and then stay consistent throughout the next two and a half hours of the tournament, in practice that's actually extremely difficult. Instead of trying that, oftentimes it's much easier to just die and ride the low and mid elo throughout the first two hours of the tournament. And then, towards the end, in the last hour, you shoot up to high elo for one final game. That way you only need to stay consistent in one really hard game. If you take a look at this match history, you can see they start off kind of hot, but as soon as they get into those higher elo games, it becomes extremely difficult. And they die early in mid game at 12 minutes, and then right at the beginning of end game in 17th place. These games really give them no points, and so now they're falling back down to mid elo, and they get into lowish mid elo. Now in this last hour, they get a 15 kill win in that mid to lowish elo that boosts them up a ton, and now all they need is like a top 6 or 7 to qual. They end up getting a 6 with 3 kills, which easily qualifies them, and that's honestly one of the easiest ways to qualify. The next game mode you can earn in is the new tournament mode from this season, Squad Victory Cash Cups. These are victory cups, so the only thing you have to do to earn is win a single game in finals. The main difference between this and solos though, is that making finals is actually quite difficult. Instead of the top 5,000 players qualifying, only 150 teams qualify, which is 600 total people. In squads to qualify, it's absolutely necessary to drop high cut win. Again, like duos though, it doesn't matter how you're doing until that last hour or two games ish. As long as you use your second to last game to put yourself in a mid to high elo and then your last game to secure qual, that's as easy as it gets. It is worth mentioning though that since this is only a 2 hour tournament, in squads instead of duos, it's easier to stay consistent in high elo throughout the tournament since there are less games overall, and in squads it's just easier to stay alive. Once you qualify, winning a game in finals is the real challenge. Again, like in solos, it comes down to a heal off every game. Unlike in solos though, the vast majority of games are won by the team who has height. In squads, since every team is 6,000 mats, usually they end up tarping throughout the moving zones and everyone needs a refresh at the end, so most of the times everyone just starts getting in on each other right at the end. This means that on any layer other than height, it becomes really hard not to get griefed and jumped in on at the end when you're going to try and get your heal off. Another benefit to high ground in squads is that only one person needs to go for the heal off, so the other three can drop down and try and disrupt the other player's heal off to guarantee your squad's win. Now that we can understand why height is the most optimal position in squads, the next course of action should be figuring out how to get it. In squad finals, surge is high, and in order to stay stacked, you need kills throughout the game. So instead of playing out all your mats in endgame, I think that if you've made it to endgame, the best strategy is to go for a refresh that will give you tons of mats, that way you can go for height. Now, for the final, and arguably the easiest game mode to earn in, Solo Zero Build Victory Cups. Not only are these arguably the easiest tournaments to earn in that Fortnite has ever had, from a difficulty standpoint, they also aren't affected by ping or FPS since you don't need to build and there's never that many people alive in endgame, which means that basically anyone on any setup or anything can earn. Not to mention that since they got rid of regional, you can play multiple of these cups in a single day since the ping doesn't matter. I'm going to skip over opens because it's really easy to qualify. All you have to do is just sit in a bush and camp. In in the finals, there are two main loadouts that you should be holding. First off, the more passive loadout is a combat shotgun, bunkers, bubbles, fizz, and nitro. This loadout allows you to carry a lot of utility so that you don't have to go for risky plays like pushing people out of their bunkers or other things like that. The main downside to this loadout is that in close range fights, you're at a disadvantage to anyone that has a gatekeeper and in long range, you don't even have a gun to shoot. The combat shotgun really only excels at mid range, so you'd have to ideally limit your interactions to those types. 
the other loadout and the one I recommend is a Burst SMG, Gatekeeper, Fizz, Nitro, and Bunker. While this sounds like not such a great idea to not carry utility like bubbles, it actually works out because you can use your extremely powerful guns to push people off their bunkers, which means you don't have to use your own. This also allows you to be stronger throughout fights in the game. And if you look at people winning multiple games, most of them are carrying two guns. If you like this video, make sure to check these two videos out and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. No, we got your bye.